Okay, this is yet another in a series of videos I'm making for my site, pfsensesetup.com. Yet another uh, instructional video in which we do some, uh, show you how to do some basic things with the pfsense firewall. And, and in this video, I'm going to cover the uh, squid proxy. And first, uh, a little bit of a discussion about proxy servers and uh, as in particular, web proxy servers and, and what they're for, why you would want to use one. Um, first thing that we should note is that um, proxy servers were ubiquitous in the early days of the World Wide Web. In particular, from say about 1990 to 2000, and the reason for this was that you know you might have a a bunch of computers on your local network. Um, Occupying a private address space like uh, 192.168.1. something, um, and these computers in this private address space, you know, if there was a computer on the internet, you know, say a web server, that web server could not access, you know, could, could not send a page to a computer, or at least not send it directly to a computer in a private address space because it you know, it didn't know, you know, it was a private address space and didn't know what, to, you know, where to send it. So the idea was to, you know, what you do is set up a proxy server. Um, so your computer on local network, you know, 192.168.1. whatever, would send it um, a request for a page to the proxy server. Which would be set up at the you know at the gateway between the you know your local network and the internet, and that proxy server would either send back a cached version of the page that you had requested, or if it didn't have a cached version, it would send a request to the web server, and the web server would send. Uh, the page back to the proxy, and then the proxy would would forward it to the local computer. And what happened was that around 1990 or 2000 or so, um, routers began to support network address translation, so um, which provided a means of of setting up a direct connection between your local computer and a remote. Uh, you know, computer on the internet. So, as a result, proxy servers were no longer necessary. Um, but there are still several reasons why we might want to set up a proxy server. One of them is to cache things. You know, we might want to cache web pages that we um, save time. Um, another thing that we might want to cache is our our files. So we might have a bunch of uh, I don't know, Windows updates that we need to install on a bunch of different computers on on the local network. So wouldn't it be nice if we could just download them once and then cache them at the proxy server? And then we the next time we have to install it, then we just we just retrieve the cached version and, and we can we can do it a lot more quickly. Um, another reason that we might want to have a proxy server is uh, you know the same reason that we were setting up the the rules in previous videos to block websites and such. We might want to have access control lists so that we can uh, you know for example if you're if you're a company and you don't want your uh, employees to be accessing Facebook or YouTube uh, during company hours, you, you can set up an access control list to block those sites. Um, and another reason might be one we, we could. We could use a, a proxy server to, you know, go the other way and, and circumvent censorship. So, you know, the company might be blocking, say, Facebook, and you want to get to Facebook, so you, you set up a proxy server on, on your home computer and you access Facebook through that proxy server. So there's several reasons why you, you might still want to use a proxy server. And now we're going to talk about the squid proxy. Um, the first thing that we should note is that it's the for release 1.0.0 0 
of the Squid Proxy was released in July of 1996, which is uh, about 19 years ago as of this recording. So it's a pretty uh, mature and, and stable product. Um, it was initially developed at the University of Colorado Boulder, if my memory serves me correctly. Um, it's available as both a standalone software and a PFSense uh, package. You can install it as a standalone uh, proxy server under Linux, and you might actually want to do that. Um, but in this video, we're just concerned about the PFSense package, which is what we're going to install today. Um, it's developed almost exclusively through voluntary efforts, so if you want to support it, you might want to consider going to the uh, Squid pay, uh, homepage and, and finding out how to do that. Um, so now we're going to begin the installation. So we're here at the PFSense uh, login page here. So you're going to type in the username and password. And we, we want to go to system and scroll down to packages here and click on packages. And here we go. We have, and when we click on packages, it takes us, there's two tabs here, uh, available packages and installed packages. We're on the installed packages uh, tab. So we want to go to available packages. Let's just click on that. Um, and one of the nice things about the latest uh, update to PFSense is that they've divided the packages up into different uh, tabs, different sections here with with separate tabs, and you can find the Squid package by scrolling down on the All tab, but you can also find it under Other Categories. So we'll click on Other Categories and scroll down to Squid, and here it is. And you can also see up here Sarge, which is another uh, package that I may do a video on uh, soon. But right now we're just concerned with Squid, and you'll notice that there's two entries for Squid. There's Squid and Squid 3, and as you might have guessed, Squid 3 is a newer version of Squid. Uh, version 2.7.9 of Squid, which is uh, what we have here, it was released in 2010. Uh, this version was released in 2012, and they mentioned here some of the things that, that uh, Squid 3 has that, uh, that, are, that are new. Exchange Web Access Assistant, SSL filtering, antivirus integration. Um, and you can go to the release notes here to see some of the the um, the, the uh, addition, new features of uh, the newer version of Squid. Um, and you might be wondering which one you should install. Well, I've been looking at the forums and uh, people, um, a number of people seem to th think that the older version of Squid is more stable, and so they opted for that. Um, at the same time, if you find that you install the old Squid and you're not getting the performance that you expected, you might consider going with the newer version and seeing how, how that works out. Um, but in this video, I'm going to install the old version of Squid, so um, we we're, we scroll down to Squid here, and I'm going to click on plus, the plus sign here, right by the uh, the entry for Squid here. So we click, we're going to, I'm going to click on this and install the Squid package. And it says, and so now we go to the package installer and it says, package Squid will be installed. Please confirm the action. So I'm going to click on the confirm button. And... We're beginning the package installation, um, and uh, so you're downloading package configuration file done. Um, this should install uh, fairly quickly if my memory serves me correctly. Um, but um, let's see. You might want to it uh, if it takes if it takes too long, I'll I will pause the recording. Um, but it seems to be going pretty quickly here. And let's just go back uh, while, while it's installing. Maybe we should go back and uh, see uh, what what the release notes are for version 3. Um, 
here we go, versions. Um, they're up to 3.5 now. Oh, here. No, there's development version 4. Uh, so let's take a look at the, at the 3.0 notes here. Um, so let's see, code convert, you know, converted to, uh, let's see, so this is the first version that supports ICAP. Uh, it looks like uh, anti antivirus integration. Um, and we'll see how well we're doing here. Um, okay, we're it's downloading and extracting. Okay, I think I will pause the video so that we can uh, save some time here. Okay, I uh, paused the recording. Um, and it's a good thing too because it took about uh, five five minutes, and it's not quite even done yet. Um, it's let's see, we're on reconfiguring filter and down to writing configuration now so it might take a good few minutes uh, for the installation to complete and it says now installation complete please check to make sure the package is configured from the respective menu then start the package okay let's just take a look uh, let's click on installed packages and it looks like squid is there now in the list of installed packages so now we want to go to services um, and we scroll down to proxy server. Note that it doesn't say squid proxy, it just says proxy server. So we'll click on proxy server. And let's set this up here. Um, for proxy interface, um, we can install it on more than one interface. We want to install it at least on LAN. We can select multiple interfaces by holding on a shift key. So I'm going to select LAN and DMZ. Um, let's see. And then allow users on interface. Um, and, uh, this allows us, this enables, uh, us to set it up so that users can connect to the interface, select in the proxy interface field above here. We'll be added to the proxy so we only have to add the interface's subnet to the list of uh, allowed subnets and, uh, transparent proxy. So this makes it, we want to leave this check because this sets it up so that all requests for Port 80 will be forwarded to the proxy server, so all requests for HTTP traffic. Um, and then these other ones, I don't think we need to change. You might want to change the log store directory if you have another drive that you that you want to save the the, the logs on. Um, and then there's enable logging here. It says uh, this will enable the access log. Don't switch this on if you don't have much disk space left. Um, you might want to log it if you if you have reason to analyze the traffic. If you, for example, you want to find out who's which which of your employees is on Facebook all the time. So um, you may or may not want this to be checked depending on on what your needs are. But for now, we'll just leave it unchecked. Um, so let's just I I set up the interfaces here and I left logging um, off. Proxy port is 3128. I don't see any need to change that. So we'll leave that as it is. Let me just click on save here. This should enable the proxy on, on the LAN and DMZ interfaces. Um, okay, we saved the, the general settings. Um, we might want to set up some access control here. Let's see if we can block slash dot. Um, Okay, so we have uh, on uh, here. Here we have uh, on the access control section here. We have a blacklist. So it says enter each destination domain on a new line that we blocked to to users who are allowed to use this proxy. So let's just type slash dot dot org, um, and we'll click on save here. Okay, we've saved it. So let's let's now try see if we can access slash dot, which we shouldn't be able to do if this worked. Um, so here we go. We're trying to access slash dot dot org, and it it was blocked. We got an error. The requested URL cannot be retrieved. Note note that we're getting a page from from Squid. We're not getting it from the web server uh, or from outside. Okay, well that covers uh, Squid proxy. So uh, I'll see you in the next video.